Hey there, my name's Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. This is my fourth and final video in my series on Risk v We've covered what is Risk v is it open source hardware, what goes into designing a Risk v process of the microarchitecture, the manufacturing, the software and so on. We've looked at the dangers of compliance and forking with Risk v and now I'm going to try and tell you what I think is going to happen over the next few years with Risk v So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Now, what do I think is going to happen? Well, I, I found an interesting quote here from Aaron Spelling, who said this, you can't predict a show, you can't predict if a show is going to work or not until it's on the air. And of course, he was in the uh, kind of the 80s. He was responsible for so many TV shows, 70s and 80s, Starsky and Hutch, Charlie's Angels, Heart to Heart, Beverly Hills 90210. I mean, the list, this guy was a legend in American TV, but he knew that you can't actually know whether something's going to work until actually it's out there. And that's true in many ways with Risk 5. I can't tell the future. I don't know what's going to happen, but I can guess. So here are my guesses of what I think is going to happen with Risk 5, with the caveat that I could be completely wrong. I could be absolutely completely wrong, but this is what I think is going to happen. So the first thing is there will be lots of hype for lots of years to come yet. What we are now, 2019, we're going to be hearing about Risk 5 over the next few years and it's not going to go away. Here's an interesting quote from Martin Fink, who is the Chief Technology Officer of Western Digital. Western Digital, of course, use Risk 5 for their microcontrollers. They are part of the Risk 5. For those who say, I want to be part of a defining, inventing and creating where the world is going to be and how the next generation of applications are going to be optimized, this is the time to get involved. And he was talking about risk five okay so there will be hype this is the way to go this is the new direction this is what it's going to be and some of that will be real okay some of that will be real there's absolutely no doubt about that there will be successes with risk five and i'll talk more about that in a moment but some of it will just be echo chamber stuff i think risk five is great yeah i think risk five is great and everybody just hears what everybody else in their little bubble uh, is saying so you have to try to filter out some of that bubble stuff to actually deal with the reality of what will be available. Some of it will be people dreaming of reproducing Linux for hardware. That ain't gonna happen because of what I said earlier on about the fact that ultimately you need to make chips and making chips is expensive. Some people have a desire to democratize technology and that's a good desire. Take it out of the hands of the few and put it into the hands of the many and risk five is a possibility, possible way of doing that. There is, of course, the idea that grass is always greener. Of course, a Risk v processor will be better than an Intel processor. Of course, it will be better than an ARM processor. Why? Because it's new, because it's different. And the grass, of course, is never green. And once you get onto the other side of the fence, you'll see that, of course, the problems exist the same. The same architectural problems have to be solved. Memory speed, buses, uh, you know, branch predictors, uh, you know, caching. All these technologies need to be done. And Risk v doesn't solve any of those problems. GPUs, DSPs, you know, uh, AI, machine learning, all these things are not solved by RIS-5 and they take effort and so the grass is never greener on the other side. And some people will be hoping to see cheaper hardware with the idea that because it is, uh, you don't need to pay a license fee for the ISA, then of course that will result in cheaper hardware. But as we saw, companies like Sci-Fi and Andy Technology are making their money by licensing their designs. So unless somebody invests millions of dollars in producing a design and then gives it away for free and then someone else manufactures it, okay, so they get it all for free and then they maybe sell it for the base price of what it costs to manufacture the chips, this hopes of cheaper hardware is not gonna happen. Now, one thing that will happen is that microcontrollers with RISC-5 will be a success. RISC-5 microcontrollers will be important. Why? Because one, performance is not as important. It is important, but it's not as important as, for example, if you're trying to compete with uh, an Intel i7 processor or an, or an AMD Ryzen processor or a Cortex A76 processor. It's not as important. And microcontrollers are simpler to design, which means that you can do development on an FPGA. Uh, and an FPGA is not that expensive by an FPGA development board. You can work at it and you can get yourself a microcontroller that supports RISC-V and that's very possible, particularly for those that have done hardware development at university, those that have experience in hardware development. This is a possibility. More hobbyists, more amateurs can get involved. And of course, big companies like Western Digital and NVIDIA are already using or plan to use microcontrollers based on uh, RISC-V already. And of course, they will aid in the popularity. And at some point, something like a RISC-V uh, Arduino board will come out, 
a RISC V uh, board that is good with a microcontroller that you can kind of connect LEDs to it and stepper modes and all that and it will be compatible with whatever ecosystem uh, is popular at the time and this will make it wow look at this an Arduino based RISC V board and that will be great and it may even be a RISC V design that's completely open source with all of the files and, and software and all of the hardware stuff published uh, on the website maybe even the board itself will be completely open source, and that will be important and I think that will will actually be a, a, a key step forward and people will get excited about that and they should do. So that will be interesting when that kind of happens. So microcontrollers will succeed because of their relative sim simplicity and because performance is not such an issue. But outside of microcontrollers, there will be many big fanfare launches of RISC-V processors for mobile or for servers or for embedded or for IoT or for machine learning or for the desktop or for single board computers and most will fail. So we'll get lots of big fanfare and there will be big events and there will be lots of press and there will be amazing and there will be a big event and they'll just call everybody, but it will fail not because of risk five. So I'm not having a go at risk five here. It's not the failure of risk five, but because designing a chip which is good, the micro architecture is hard. Okay, you ask Intel, ARM, AMD, Samsung, Apple, all these companies, how many engineers, how hard do they have to work to design their processes and they will tell you the amount of effort they put in is a lot. So these micro architectures that will come along will fail in terms of performance or efficiency or cost or any combination of those, okay? And it's not because RISC-V is wrong, but because designing a good processor that can meet the market and can make a headway into that market is hard. Many have tried and many have failed, regardless of whether it is RISC-V or any other ISA. And the fourth thing that will happen, as I've said earlier, is that RISC-V will split into two or more camps with different goals. Why? Because there will be a need to differentiate. So somebody's processor will have something in it that the other processor doesn't have. It may even be proprietary. It may even be something that they've patented. It may even be something that they've copyrighted. It may be something that stops other people from doing it. And they're doing that because there's actually all these other risk five processes and they need to uh, differentiate. And why? Because you've got server processes, you've got desktop processes, you've got mobile processes, you've got IoT processes, you've got machine learning processes, and these need to be different to each other. And if you want to succeed in a commercial space where you pay for the manufacturing of the chip and then you sell that chip you're going to need to make sure that you're different than the other people and there will be non-standard extensions that will aid in that ability to add something to your chip and of course there will be politics and personality clashes this has often been a key point in why there has been fragmentation of open source pro uh, projects and finally a big corporation will do fork to own so if you are someone who is a multi-million dollar company and you see the advantage of risk five, you say, well, I'll have a bit of that. And then you take it and you fork to it and you make your version ever so slightly differently. And then you can start using it and selling your version of it. In fact, there's no reason why Intel or AMD or ARM or Apple or Samsung or whoever cannot make a risk five processor. I'm not saying they will, and of course they will try to keep their own ISAs up and alive and running and competitive and high performance, but anybody can make it. And then if they make it, if they're big enough, they can try to own it by becoming the dominant force in that area. And that's what's gonna happen. You will see that happen. I don't know when, but that will inevitably happen. Now, you may not agree with some of the things I have said, and I'm absolutely fine with that. Okay, but if you are thinking you have a different point of view, that's great, but please make sure you know your history. Look at the history of DEC with the VAX and the Alpha. Look at the history of Sun with the Spark. Look up companies like Transmeta with their Crusoe processor. Look at what happened to Cyrix. Look at what happened to the ITAM. Look at what happened to an Intel on mobile. Intel on mobile did not fail because uh, the x86 ISA is unstandard or needs lots of licensing costs or whatever the other things. It failed because it's hard to make a microprocessor that is very power efficient to run on mobile. And if Intel couldn't do it, why do you think that your company will be any better? Well, they may be better. They may succeed. ARM obviously succeed where Intel don't. So, but if you think about a huge engineering billion dollar company, if they can't do it, then why will other companies do it? They failed, not because of their respective ISAs, but because of something else. Look at all of these ISAs, Vax, Alpha, Spark. Look at them all. Itanium, 
and they all failed and none of them were because of licensing fees or because they were open source or not open source. It's because the semiconductor industry is hard and designing a processor is hard and making one that is cheap and powerful and high performance and efficient is hard. You might not agree with me, I'm absolutely fine with that. But do know your history because history has a lot to teach us. Okay, so that's it. That is my fourth and final segment on Risk Five. I really do hope you've enjoyed this series. If you did, please do give this video and all those other videos a thumbs up. Please also consider subscribing to the Gary Explains channel. And well, that's it for this series of videos. I'll see you in the next one.